All right, I think we need to bring the adults up to speed on what we have been learning. So I'm going to look around the room and see if I see any kids who can answer a few questions. Hmm, let's see. Let's see, you got to be sitting up straight. Caleb, sit up straight. All right. You want to answer some questions? Yes. All right. So what is one thing you have learned? I've seen you here every night. What is one thing you've learned since Monday night as we have been exploring the Bible? The Arctic. Okay, we learned about the Arctic Circle. Can somebody tell us something about the Arctic Circle? Yes. Arctic Circle. What about it? So um, some years there's um, it's dark and the, there's little lights that the northern lights. Northern lights. That's right. So in the Arctic, it's very cold, and there's certain times of year where it's dark. But there are these things called the northern lights, which bring light to the Arctic Circle. And what is it that we have class that brings light to our lives? so that we can see where we're going and we don't get hurt. What brings light to us? Jesus. Jesus, that's right. And Jesus, how does he bring light to us? The Bible says, what, what does he, how does he bring light to us? Do you know that, Talia? How does he bring light to us? Through the Holy Word, that's right. Everybody say it with me. Say, the Bible brings light to us. Just like the northern lights brings light to the Arctic Circle. Okay, what else have we learned about? Yes. That the Bible has been copied in over 2,000 languages. All right, the Bible has been copied in over 2,000 languages. And you know what makes the Bible uh, so important is that it, in that, it, that fact is that it's unique. Remember, the Bible is unique. Everybody say, unique. unique. And we learned that New York City is unique. Everybody say, unique New York. Unique. Now say it three times fast. Unique. It's hard to do, isn't it? <laughs> unique New York. All right. Let's take a look at our slide up here. This is going to help us remember. We have the Arctic Circle, and in the Arctic Circle... We see we have the North Pole in the middle, we have the Arctic Ocean, and around that circle we have, I don't know, seven or eight different countries represented. And let's take a look at the next slide. We learned about blizzard. Everybody say, hi, blizzard. Hi, blizzard. And blizzard is, shh, blizzard is a unique Arctic animal, and he reminds us of the most unique, the coolest book on the planet, which is the Bible. And what do you think the B stands for? It is going to stand for the Bible. It's the book of books. All right. And then last night we learned about what? Let's take a look at the last night's slide. We have Snowball. Everybody say, hi, Snowball. And we learned that the Bible has made an incredible impact on the world. We learned that there, the Bible is written in over 2,000 languages. It's very unique. And Snowball here, he's our Arctic hare, he changes from dark to light as the season changes. She reminds us of how God's Word changes lives. Everybody say, the Bible, Bible. will change lives, change lives. When, you read it. when you read it. So when we read the Bible, it begins to change our minds to have the mind of Christ. And so let's take a look at one more slide. Let's take a look at the next one. We're going to learn tonight about bedrock. Remember we, I mentioned the word bedrock earlier. Everybody say bedrock. bedrock. Now, the top of the world in this Antarctic, the North Pole there, there is no bedrock base. Everybody say no, no. Bedrock, bedrock base. So what that means is, is you see all of that out. It looks like snow and ice. And guess what? What happens to snow and ice when the sun comes up? It begins to melt. And so these, this, this, uh, this 
water, this ocean of water freezes and then melts and freezes and melts and freezes and melts. There's no bedrock base to it. Does that look like a place you would want to build a house? No, I don't think so. So let's take a look at the next slide and we're going to see a new creature here that God has created called a Norwal. Everybody say Norwal. We're going to call him Spike. And Spike lives in the shifting, changing Arctic Ocean. He reminds us that there is no shifting or changing in the Bible. So look at that thing on the top of his head. Does anybody know what that is? Okay, what is it, sir? It is a horn. That's right. It's a tooth. You're right. You're so smart. That is actually a tooth. Everybody say, that's a strange tooth. So we're going to learn about the bedrock base, and maybe if there's time, we'll learn more about Norwals, because I don't see those swimming in the James River. Do you? No, I hope not. That would not be fun. All right. So I'm going to do something a little different tonight. I have a cart over here with an uh, with a object lesson that I'm going to bring over to you guys so y'all can see it. I might need some help. All right, so I think everybody might be able to see this. All right, we're going to take a look in the Bible and learn about how we need to build our lives. So let's look at the Matthew, the verse on the screen here in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to demonstrate this, okay? So it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them... I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Everybody say rock. rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now, I want to demonstrate this house being founded on the rock. In fact, I'm going to need a helper. Okay, you, sir, right here in the blue, yep, shirt, come on up here and help me. What's your name? Trayvon, all right, run up here, buddy. All right, so we are going to demonstrate what it means. Do you see those, those three bricks right there? Can you grab those bricks? Do one at a time. And let's lay them down here uh, on the bottom, okay? Put those next to each other. And we might be able to put that up on the screen there. Hope so. All right. So what do you think these bricks represent, Trayvon? The rock, that's right. So we're going to try it out. We're going to experience what the Bible says. He says that we can build our house on the rock. And when, when, when the rain comes, when the storm comes, what's, what do you think is going to happen to the house if it's on the rock? It's, it's going to stay there. It's, it's going to stay there, that's right. So I have with me a house. Everybody see this house? All right, I'm going to put it on the rock right here. And I know it's inside the container and you might not be able to see it, but what happens is when the storm comes, it's water going to go everywhere. And so I need to keep it inside. So can everybody see this? All right. Maybe you can see it better on the screen. I don't know. But let's see if it's going to stand, okay? Now, I have a little bit of water here. See this water? Do you think you can pour it on? Yes. How about I help you? Okay. Okay. So you grab that side, and let's do it together. You ready? So I think we need to make a sound like a storm. Now, did the house stand? Yes. Yes. That house is standing. Now, let's take a look at the next slide. On the next slide, we see the wise man built his house on a firm foundation. Everybody say it with me. Say, a wise man, wise man 
builds his house on a firm foundation. Now, what we're learning tonight is that the Bible and the Word of God in the Bible is a firm foundation. When we listen to what the Bible says and do what the Bible says, then we know when the storms of life come just like that. Was that a bad storm? Yes. Yeah. Then we can stand and we don't, we don't fall. So we're going to put this away. And Trayvon, you can go back to your seat. I'm going to pick someone else to help with the next experiment. All right, let's see. I'm going to get a girl. How about right here in the white shirt, please? Yep, come on up here and help me. All right, and what's your name, young lady? Savannah. Okay, Savannah. I'm Mr. Scott. Uh, so what we need is what? What do you think we need to finish this? How about we read the next verse in the Bible to see how to do this experiment? Okay? All right, let's take a look at the next slide. And it says, verse 26, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man. Do you want to be a foolish man? No. A foolish man will be one who built his house on the sand. So what do you think we need, Savannah? Sand, all right? And the rest of the verse says, And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it fell. And great was its fall. So let's put some sand. I'm going to need your help because it's really heavy. All right? All right, help me dump all of the sand in there. Don't breathe it. Okay. Uh, that's enough. That's enough. Okay. Now, I'm gonna, can you take this and just kind of shake it so it's flat? Because you wouldn't build a house on a hill, would you? Like that. Okay. All right. That looks pretty good. Let me see. Okay. Now we need a house, right? All right, let's see. Do I have a house down here? I think so. All right, here's another house, everybody. Does that look like a big house? Is this the same house? It looks like the same house, right? Okay. So we're going to put this house on the sand. All right. Now, you ready to dump some water on this? Okay. I think we need another storm. Can you guys make a storm sound? Ooh, this is a terrible storm. All right, help me out. All right, so we got to dump it. Ready? Whoa. I tell you what, it didn't fall, but it sure did move, didn't it? It didn't fall, but it sure did move. Does it look like it's in the same place? So would you like it if your house was moved down the street? No, no, I mean, that would be weird, right? You pull into your driveway, and there's no house. Where's my house? Oh, it's over there. That'd be kind of weird, right? All right, thanks, Savannah. Good job. All right. <laughs> All right, so everybody say this with me. Everybody say, I have to hear... And I have to do what the Bible says to be like a wise man. All right, can you think of any commands in the Bible that the Bible says that we need to do? Does anybody think of anything that the Bible says that we need to do? What are some things that the Bible says that we need to do? Some commands. What? The Ten Commandments. There's the Ten Commandments. Okay. Okay. What about you? Love your neighbor like you love yourself. Love your neighbor. All right, very good. What else do we need to do? Respect our mother and father. All right, I love that. High five. Respect our mom and dad. Favor. What else do we need to do? Thou shalt not murder. Okay, that's one of those Ten Commandments, I think. Thou shalt not murder. That's right. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at the next slide, and we're going to read here in Colossians, and I think we're going to read it all together. Colossians 3, 8, and 9. Say this with me. Everybody say, but now. 
is the time to cast off and throw away all these rotten garments of anger, hatred, cursing, and dirty language. Don't tell lies to each other. It was your old life with all its wickedness that did that sort of thing. Now it is dead and gone. So the Bible tells us what we're not supposed to do, but it also tells us what we are supposed to do. You all see that? And that's going to help us build our house. You guys are, let's see how old you all. I think we have kindergartners in here, and some of you are four years old. Raise your hand if you're four. Okay. Raise your hand if you're five. Who's five? Who's six? All right. Who's seven? Anybody seven? All right. How about eight? Anybody eight? Nine? Ten? Eleven? Twelve? Thirteen? Fourteen? Twenty-five? Forty-five? Sixty-six? All right. So, hey, got, hey, six-year-olds, you guys have a whole life ahead of you. And you know what? While you are young, it's real important to get the Bible on the inside of you by reading it and learning it and begin to do it so that you have a solid house built for your life, okay? Now, all you adults in the back that you're not six years old anymore, but how many of you would agree, adults in the room, that it would be a good idea for these kids to have the Bible as a strong foundation in their life? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Hey, kids, look at all these adults. They're cheering for you. They agree. They are in agreement that you need the Bible as a strong foundation in your life. Yes. Now, let's do this. Let me ask you this. Is there anything that the Bible says that we should do that sometimes you have a hard time doing? Anybody? Now, these are just the kids. I'm going to come ask some parents, some adults. Anything the Bible says that we might have a hard time doing? What? Respecting parents. Okay, respecting parents. All right, any, any adults in the room? What, what's some things that we might have a hard time doing? Forgive. Forgiving. All right. So the Bible says we need to forgive. I'm walking around the room. I'm going to go find some people. Anybody? Raise your hand or I might come to you. Put you on the spot. What's some? All right, we got one back here. What are some things that we find in the Bible that we might have a hard time doing? Always walking in love. Oh, walking in love. You mean like being nice, being kind, helping the other people? What else? What else might be we have a hard time doing? Okay. Love thy enemy. Oh, loving our enemies. Okay. You mean we have to love our enemies? Okay. What do we have a hard time doing, Banner? Cleaning up our room. Cleaning up our room. I am with you there. <laughs> I totally understand. I know exactly what you mean. Anybody else? Okay. Kids have a lot to say. All right. What do you have a hard time doing that the Bible says we need to do? You have to do our chores. Do our chores. Okay. So those cleaning up your room and doing chores, that kind of falls in line with obeying our parents and doing what they ask you to do. Okay. So what else? Homework. Homework. All right. Uh-oh. All right. Hepzibah. Don't say a lie. Don't lie. Okay. All right. You got one? All right. Tell us, what, what is it? Oh, doing something without being asked. Ooh. And all the parents say, ooh. Okay, Kevin. Uh, not washing your hands. Not washing your hands. Boy, you better wash your hands. All right. Don't come shake my hand. All right, Jocelyn. The golden rule. The golden rule, which is what? 
treat others the way you want to be treated. That's right. You guys are smart. You guys are smart. But you know what? That's the last question. But when we read the Bible and we know what to do, it helps us when we have to make those decisions, all right? When we have a relationship with God, He's able to help us by the Holy Spirit to make those decisions, to see my room is a mess. How many of your rooms are a mess today? Raise your hand if your room is a mess. Look at these honest children and adults. Okay. So, so when you have time, I'll say it this way. All right, kids, look up here. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. So when you have time, turn around. When you have time and when you go by your room, I believe the Holy Spirit will prompt you and... You need to clean your room. He'll say to you, Sean, you need to clean your room. He'll say to you, you need to clean your room. Do you need to clean your room, Prince? Yes, okay. So that's the Holy Spirit reminding you and t- prompting you to do what you know you're already supposed to do. All right? And when we read the Bible, it helps us. All right? Let's all stand to our feet because we have a new song that we're going to learn tonight called Solid Ground. So we've been talking about how the Bible is like a rock, and we can build on the Bible. We can build our life on the rock. His word is solid ground. Turn to your neighbor and say solid ground. And now, kids, we have a guest that we need to introduce to the adults in the room. What's what's our guest's name? Kai. Kai. That's right. That's right. We have a very special guest who shows up in the cabin. His name is Kai. Can everybody just call out for Kai? Kai. Kai, are you here? Kai. 
Kai, are you here? Hey, what's happening? Hey, Kai. Hey, what's going on out there? How you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Doing real good. We're just talking about authorities. And do you know, do you know what the word authority means, Kai? Hmm. Well, not exactly. Maybe some of the explorers will help me out there. Or oh. you can help me. Well, I mean, I could tell you, but maybe we've been talking about authority and how the Bible is our solid rock, and we can build our house on the rock. Does anybody out there want to help us out and tell us what does the word authority mean? I'm looking around. Favor, could you come up and help us out? What is the word authority? So, Favor, uh, hey, Kai, I'm bringing up an explorer. His name is Favor. Hey. And Favor, could you tell us what does the word authority mean? Well... Authority would mean, like, powerful. Okay, powerful, yeah. So, uh, Kai, that, that's a good answer. Powerful. Authority means that you have the right to tell someone what to do and to be in charge. So, Kai, having authority means that you have the right to be in charge. Okay. For instance, like, you know, parents. Parents have the right to be in charge. Would you agree, Favor? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. but you know, I, I, I don't always like to do what they say. Oh, Kai. We've been talking about that a little bit, uh, but I, I understand. I mean, God wants you to respect and obey your parents since, you know, he put them in charge of you, and we need to obey others who are in charge of us too. Like, can you think of anybody else that's in charge of your life? Uh, uh, well, my parents. Can I ask Favor, maybe? Well, yeah, maybe Fa the Explorer will help me. Favor, can you think of anybody else that has authority in your life other than your parents? My older brother. Older brother, okay, what else? Um, like police? Police, all right. Oh, the teacher, how about a teacher? Teacher, yeah, oh, yeah. do you have teachers? You're yeah. still in school, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're not married or anything? Uh, no. I'm not supposed to be having relationships at this Okay, school. very good. All right. Then you are definitely still in school. All right. Hey, Kai. I got a smart one over here. All right. So, um, Kai, you know, let's pretend, because I want to help the kids to understand. Can we, Kai, can we pretend that, uh, that you're the parent and favor that you're a 10-year-old? How old are you exactly? Uh, Come on, I'm Aaron. on the verge of becoming what was he right. only three How days. about we pretend that you're 10? So today, in this example, you can be 10. And so let's no, um, go to bed. All right. And so, Kai, I've got favor here. He's, he's going to go to bed. And, um, and you're the parent. And Kai, if you could ask or tell, uh, favor your, your son here to go fetch a blanket for you. Okay. Well, let me get my parent voice on. Go get me a blanket. We're pretending, you know. Dad wants a blanket. Get him a blanket. Come on. Very good. I don't think. Oh. Well, how did that work? I think he did a pretty good job, class. He did what his parent asked him to do. Now, let's try it a different way. Let's try it a different way. So, Kai, let's pretend that. Let's pretend that favor is your little brother. So favor, can you go back and lay down in bed? He's all snuggled and warm in the bed. And, and so, hey, uh, uh, wait. Kai, now, I, I, now I'm confused. Now I'm the little brother, or he's the little brother. Okay, very good point. How about favor is still ten years old, almost, and Kai, you're the little brother. I was playing basketball. And Kai, you asked him for something. What? Asked him for what? 
Well, you're six years old, so ask him for something you might need, like a blanket. Hmm. Okay. Let me get my child voice. Oh, ah, uh, hey, wait, wait, well, well, will you get me a blanket, please? Nah, I don't feel like it. <gasps> what did you say? Nah, I don't feel like it. Oh, <gasps> Kai, he said, no, I don't feel like it. But you know what, Kai, does the younger brother have authority over the older brother? No. He doesn't have the right to give commands like that, does he? No, no. But who has the greatest authority in all the world, Kai? Do you know? Kai, do you want some help? Well, you who, know... You I... know who has the greatest authority in all the world? Who has absolute authority? Well, uh, what's this got to do with the Bible? Well... What does this have to do with the Bible? Class, they, he wants to know, what does this have to do with the Bible? Maybe, let me ask the question again, Kai. Who has the greatest authority in all the world? Well, my, my brand new baby sister is always crying, so she does. <laughs> no, just joking. No. It, it's God, of course. It's God, that's right. And what book did God write? Uh, the Bible. The Bible, that's right. And that makes the book, the Bible, the absolute authority. Yeah, the book of books. Favor, can you say absolute authority? Absolute authority. Yeah. All right, very good. Absolute authority. And you know what? The Bible is the Lord's Word, so it's our absolute authority. And our job is to, by God's grace, read and study the Bible and then do it. Everybody yeah. say, do it. That's right. It's I, the coolest book on the planet, right? Yeah. I, uh, wait a minute now. Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, favor, I think yeah. he gave you his You can have it. Get a little hot back here. Yeah. All right. Well, I got to go now. My mom wants me to clean my room. In fact, I think I'm going to ask my little brother to do it. Nah, oh, just joking. Just I love joking. my mom. I'm going to obey right. her. I'm going to go clean my room. She's got the best hugs and kisses, too. Bye. <laughs> All right. Everybody say bye, Kai. All right. Um, Favor, you want to come back to your seat? All right. Favor, it's time to come back to your seat. Favor, you did a good job acting. I appreciate that. Actually, that was not rehearsed, and that's just our friend Favor. We love him. He is awesome. So, class, uh, before we go any further tonight, I want to ask you all a very important question. Ain't everybody sitting up straight? Remember we talked about ears to hear so we can hear what God is saying to us? So, as I'm looking around the room, we've been talking about the Bible and how it's the greatest book on the earth. It's been around for all of these thousands of years. We learned about how many languages it's been translated into. And we sang a song about how Jesus died on the cross for us and paid the price for us for all our sins. So I'm going to ask everybody just to close your eyes. I want to ask a very important question. Everybody sitting up straight. Everybody close your eyes. I'm asking you to close your eyes because I want you to listen and not be distracted by anybody else. So as I'm looking around the room, I want to ask this really important question. There may be somebody here tonight and you say, I don't know who Jesus is. I've never asked Jesus to come into my life and I want a relationship with this Jesus. I want a relationship with God, the author of the Bible. And if that's you, the Bible says that to receive Christ, all we have to do is to confess that Jesus is Lord, 
believe in our heart that he rose from the grave, and the Bible says we're then saved. And so I want to ask for a show of hands. I'm going to look around the room. Is there anybody in the room you want to pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart? All right. I see your hand. Thank you for your hand. I see your hands. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, those of you that have your hands up, I'm going to ask you to do something really bold, okay? I'm going to ask you to stand up right where you are because I want to pray with you. All right, so if you've raised your hand and you want to ask Jesus to come into your heart, that's a wonderful thing. Your life will never be the same. It's just like the demonstration that we gave about the sand versus the rock. So the very beginning of your life ahead of you will begin tonight by placing your life on the rock, the rock of Jesus. So if you've not done that, not prayed this prayer, I want to ask you to stand up with us. We're all going to stand that are standing. Just those, sorry, just those that are standing. If you want to pray and you haven't prayed this prayer, I'm going to ask you to stand with us, okay? If you've never prayed this prayer, I want to ask you to stand. All right. And so would you say this with me? Those of you that are standing, look at me. Everybody look at me. Those of you that are standing, say this prayer with me. So that means repeat after me, okay? So the Bible says that you have to confess, and do we, we have to confess with our mouth, okay? So we use our mouth to pray. So those of you that are standing, say this with me. Say, Lord... I ask you to come into my heart tonight. I give you my life, and I ask you to be my Lord and help to put my life on the rock of your word. Lord, I want to grow up to fulfill your will for my life. In Jesus' name, I believe that you died on the cross for all of my sins and that you rose again on the third day to have life prepared for me in eternity, but also on this earth, that I can live free from the enemy. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we want to celebrate. Do you guys like to celebrate? Yeah. All right. Well, you can't. It's, ha- it's hard to celebrate sitting down. So let's have everybody to stand up. We are going to um, have a couple more songs tonight before we get into what else we have. Because I know there's a letter that was written and delivered And we want to find out what happened with that letter. But let's all stand to our feet. And I believe Jamari is going to come back and bless us with a Bible gem. This is a Bible gem.
fall, and it did not fall, and it did not fall. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, and it did not fall, and it did not fall. And the rain descended.
Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, you may be seated. And with everybody really quiet, last night we ended our service with a letter being delivered. And we're not sure what that letter said, but I think we need to find out tonight. Is everybody quiet? Sneak this in there. Oh, I did talk. I'm gonna sneak this in there. That, right? I didn't get a wink of sleep last night. So, I'm sorry. So it's, so it like it's all your fault. My fault. Y'all want to know what she did? Guess what? I'm minding my own business. Everything's regular. And she arranges for my sister to come for a visit. Walt's sister. Remember her? The intimidating, highly successful, no nonsense president of Wonder Punch Zeal Company? Oh, my goodness. Uh, what am I going to do? Well, I can tell you right now. I hope she likes it with me. Uh, well, you have no know. idea where the story is going. So just keep your eyes and your heart open to the new ideas. You know what? She's probably going to come here and, and ask me to come back to that, that stinky Wonder Crunch cereal company. But guess what? I'm not going anywhere. Or maybe she's on an Alaskan cruise and just wanted to stop by for a friendly visit. Friendly? <laughs> yeah, right. It'll be everything but friendly. Well, maybe things are about to change. You got that right. <laughs> oh, dear. Yoo-hoo! Anybody home? I always yell that in case the bear's around. You know, it kind of helps the bears go away, so I always yell that. Mr. Wonder! Well? I, I got an idea. Maybe if I don't say anything, they, they, they won't show up. That's terrible. You should be ashamed of yourself. Okay. Hello? Uh, yeah, come in. Nice. Love the enthusiasm. It's Dusty! Hey, and Dusty. And I have a special guest. Listen, while you and Margo get reacquainted, I'm going to slip out and just warm up my coffee. I'll be right back. All right, I heard yeah. back now. Look who's here! Oh. Uh, hi. Miss um, Jimmy. Uh, I go put it in now. Uh, hmm? I go put it in Dusty now. Dusty said you got my letter. Wait till, uh, yeah, I read it yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. I'm uh, uh, sorry, it's all my fault. We uh, well, you know the uh, well the the letter fell out of the bag. It's a some kind of poor thing, you know. So it's all my fault. I'm so sorry. Well, um, gee, uh, I'm 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 really sorry. I hope I'm not intruding. Well, that's okay. You're here now. This is awkward. My, what wonderful weather we're having here. Oh, 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 oh. Look here. Um, Walt, look. 
I brought you some Wonder Crunch cereal. Uh, I, I figured it'd be a little hard to find it out here, and I know you really l would like some. Thanks. So, how are things going at uh, Wonder Crunch? <laughs> great, really, really great. Just fine. All right. That's, that's, that's good. Yeah, 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 it is. Uh, so, people still eat cereal, I guess. Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, uh, I, I think they do anyway. Um, uh, first quarter sales are up a whole 8% over last year. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, return on equity is up, 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 steadily up, and, well, our stockholders are really thrilled, really, pre really pleased and everything, and, well... Okay. Uh, excuse me for a second. Wow! Sales are up, huh? Return on equity, huh? What an interesting conversation that you're having. I don't think I've had this much fun since uh, I fell down the stairs and broke my collarbone! Well, what do you think we should talk about then? Hmm. Well, you... Hmm. Hmm. Well, you've got a lot of things to talk about. Let's see. Uh, well, you know, well, um, let's see now. You know, you're the brother and there's a sister, so it can't be that hard. Wait, listen, you don't understand. We haven't seen or spoken to each other in over Two years. Well, you got a lot of catching up to do, right? Well, yeah, sure, sure, that's, that's true, but uh, we're not really close or anything like that. Well, you're going to have to change that, you know. I, I, I know, but I mean, isn't it pretty obvious he doesn't want me here? Listen. All the way up here, you and I have been talking about how God's been working in your life and all the things he's doing in your life. Why don't you ask Walt what's going on with him? Yeah, great idea. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. Will you pray for me? Well, well, well sure. I'll, I'll be glad to. <coughs> Anytime you're ready. Dear Lord, the one and only Lord, the one true God, I pray right now that you help Marco and Walt have a great two days, get along and everything like that. And I thank you, Father God, for all the amazing things that you're doing on Marco's life, and we ask that you do the same thing for Walt. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, you know... I gotta get going. I got some backpackers to pick up at Cold Feet, so I'll be praying for you, okay? Okay, but I'm really gonna need those prayers, you promise. Okay, Don't forget. Now, don't worry about it. It's gonna be okay. We prayed about it, and we're I just know, gonna have to trust the Lord, okay? Yes. All right, okay. you'll be doing well. Just trust me, you'll see. Okay. Got you later. Thanks, Dusty. Safe trip. Sorry. Oh. Oh, wow. So, 
this is a really nice place. Did you, did you do all of this yourself? Uh, yep, I, I did. Wow. I mean, not bad. <laughs> I'm really impressed, little brother. Looks like you've done good out here all by yourself. Thanks. Well, hey, you uh, want some uh, uh, coffee? Sure, sure, I'd love some. And, oh, wait a minute. Is that a king salmon? I mean, that can't be a king salmon, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Wow. I'm sure there's a huge fish tail behind that, how you caught that, and I'm sure you can't wait to tell me, right? Well, sure, you think I should tell her? You, you, you want to you hear it? Sure. I okay. can't wait. <laughs> hey. What? You seem different. Well, well, yeah, yeah, a lot has changed, yeah. but I want to hear your earlier. story first. Okay, here we go. See, I got these neighbors that come from Finland every now and then, so I picked up on their accent. I've been practicing. Here we go. You ready? You guys ready? It was a dark and stormy night. <laughs> so with Walt and Margo having broken the ice between them, they begin to get reacquainted. Walt tells a story about how he got the salmon, and just like any good fisherman, he added a bit more details and exaggerated a little bit, but he made it more interesting. Then, it was Margot's turn. <laughs> Here, sit down, you silly. <laughs> Quite a story. Ah, yeah, I'll say. Well, listen, it really all starts with uh, that book that you left behind, remember? What book was that? Our dad's Bible, remember? Yeah. Well, anyway, let me go on. Um, well, for a long time, <laughs> I just basically let it sit on my coffee table. You know, I'd kind of walk around and just kind of look at it. And, well, I know how dad read every night, every day, you know, without failure. I mean, and it really seemed to have, you know, been good for him, but I just never really could understand what was it that really drew him to the Bible, you know, for all those years. Well, so one day I just stopped walking around it and I actually picked it up. You did? I did. I actually, can you believe it? I actually picked up the book, okay? Okay. So, I mean, I opened it up. I started flipping through some of the pages and... Well, I finally decided to just hunker down and start reading it. And Walt, I gotta tell you, the most amazing thing happened. After I picked it up, I, I couldn't put it down. I couldn't put it down. For three whole days, Walt, I mean three whole days, I ate, I slept, I read the Bible. I mean the whole Bible from beginning to end. And it's like, like this, this fog lifted from me and I was, I just knew that the change had come and I just realized for the first time in my life that this wasn't just a book. This, this, this was the holy word of God and I knew that I needed to finally obey him Jesus and said, live by his word. And Jesus said in Matthew seven twenty four. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built, the, who built his house on a rock. Margo realized this, this just as a house needs strong foundation to stand on. Her life needed one as well. And there's no other better, better foundation than God's word. Meanwhile, as Walt and Margaret continue to talk, Rico, one of the treasure hunters, returns to check on his brother, who's been hiding like a, on, who's been hiding like a spy nearby. No thanks, dude. You're supposed to be watching the cabin. I am, and I hear him talking to me. What if he hears you? Don't you see? 
How do you even know they have turkeys in the Arctic? No, they don't. Yes, they do. No. Okay, so yes. If they don't have turkeys, you think they can make food? How should I know? And who cares? I do. I mean, you gotta have turkeys to make food. No, you don't. Yes, you do. And and gravy and stuffing. Stop it. And cranberry sauce. Oh, I said stop it. You're making me hungry. And pumpkin pie. Oh mm. man, why'd you have to say pumpkin pie? I love pumpkin pie. So you see, they gotta have turkeys here. Now come on, don't be a chicken. Give it a try. Here you go. Ew, it's wet. Oh, sorry. I've got a clean one. Well, pretty clean. Here you go. What do you do with this? You just put it against the roof of your mouth and kind of hold it in place with your tongue. That's it, now just blow. It takes a while to get used to. You got it, just keep blowing. <coughs> What's wrong? I swallowed it. That, that, that's okay, I've got, I've got another one. Oh. Uh. What's wrong with you? Nothing, boss. I'm fine. So what's the report? Report? Why'd you call us? Oh, you mean my turkey call. Did you like that? I can do a chicken, too. Want to hear it? <laughs> no, I don't want a bunch of bird calls. I want to know if you saw anyone. Oh, saw. Yeah, I saw the helmet and his sister. It's Hermit, not Helmy. Oh, I didn't think that sounded right. So what are they doing now? Oh, uh, in the cabin. Hmm. So we have to figure out a way to get them out so we can get in. Wait, they're coming. I wonder where they're going. Probably to a movie. <sighs> a movie? Hey, let me Don't show you something. So Hey, well, what else is there to do around here? This is the dog sled. Can you believe it? Really? <laughs> Imagine me. Well, th this is a first. Margo Wonder on a dog sled. Yeah, really. Wait a minute. Come on over here. Show me how you make them go. How do you make the dogs run? Okay, there's one word that you, you don't want to say it too loud now. But when you get on it, What's that? you usually go, mush! Oh, <laughs> Wait, Whoa! wait, 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 stop, stop. Make him stop! Oh, I want to ride on that. Okay, this is our chance. Come on, let's go, let's go. And with that, chapter three comes to a close. So, what do you think? Will they find what they're, will they find, the, will the treasure hunters find what they're looking for? Will they? Well, the only way to find out is coming back tomorrow. They're looking for a treasure. All right, everybody, let's stand to our feet. Everybody stand up. Put your hands up in the air like this. We're going to pray. Say this with me. Say, Lord, we thank you for all that we've learned tonight about your word, the Bible. It's our bedrock, and we can build our life on it. We thank you for your word. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you for a good night and a great day tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen.